So the first case study is one of ritualistic satanic abuse. Um, and I wrote a, just a tiny bit about this in an article, Patias and Younges, 2015, in which I give some of the details of the quotes in a bit more detail. I'm going to cut some of the gory details out of this uh, presentation. So the book, Michelle Remembers, it's published in 1980, and it involves a famous case of repressed memory recall that may have influenced later trends in repressed memory recovery, especially in the realm of satanic abuse recovery. So in this book, Michelle Remembers, it chronicles a patient who, in 1973, this patient, Michelle, started therapy with Canadian psychiatrist Lawrence Pazda, and through hypnosis and other techniques, subsequently recovered severe satanic ritual abuse memories. That recovery began in 1976 when Michelle was an adult. Now, Michelle recovered memories from a two-year period in her childhood from between uh, ages five and seven, in which she remembered being in a satanic cult with her mother. She had no memory of this before therapy was not even aware of it before therapy. Her revelations included a series of sacrifices and cannibalistic rituals, and I'm going to leave out some of the quotes. But just to summarize them, she witnessed the murder of a baby, a ritualistic surgery on herself. She witnessed several uh, dead bodies and the dismemberment of bodies, and, and, and remembered being kept kept captive in a cage as well, all of which there is no evidence ever found for. So there's not even any evidence that there was a cult or that she was in a cult. So if you're interested in finding the details of what was written in the book Michelle Remembers by Pazda and Smith, it's on pages uh, 125 to 126, that little thing that I just summarized. Now in another session, she remembers being taken into a room where several bodies were on stretchers and then I cut out the details but she remembered a dismemberment. So as unlikely as these events are and they raise questions don't they about whether repressed memories could lead to false memories at least those we just discussed were at least physically possible. Nevertheless Michelle goes on to describe memories of supernatural things that could not have happened which gives even more evidence for the possibility that false memories could have been produced here. For example, she describes how Satan was summoned and eventually removed Michelle's scars, thus erasing any evidence of the alleged abuse. This is pure unfalsifiable theory, right? And also that her memories were erased by, of the events by Satan until the time was right. So obviously there's a mix of beliefs of repressed memories in with religious beliefs in this particular therapy. Michelle also describes a memory where Satan took her on a visit to hell and introduced his armies of the living dead, where she says that there's people um, in a terrible state. I'm not going to repeat the words, but it was presented on page 244 of the book. Um, she also remembered a sacrifice of a girl by Satan himself. Now, given the supernatural, impossible aspects of some of these memories, they're likely false memories br brought about by the hypnotic sessions. Even without supernatural aspects, several investigation investigations found no corroboration of the events portrayed in the book. One possible alternative explanation is that the authors deliberately fabricated the stories, but I don't think that is actually true because in interviews afterwards, uh, they carried on believing in uh, their stories. They, they, they carried on for decades afterwards without retraction. Now, whatever the evidentiary value for memory distortions in this evidence, it is entirely possible that this book influenced other satanic ritual abuse scares in the 1980s and 1990s and by extension contributed to the memory wars that came in the 1990s as well which was a debate between those who did not believe in repressed memories and those who did so a number of authors have also noted that there is very little substantial evidence for most or if not all cases of 
satanic ritual abuse in general, right? So, for example, Lanning in 1989, in a re report for the FBI, concluded that there was a general lack of physical evidence for all allegations of ritualistic satanic cult activity. In other words, nobody has ever found evidence of this kind of satanic ritual abuse activity, despite us hearing about it in, in the news. Now let's move on to another seminal and important case that involved uh, psychotherapy that in recovered uh, repressed memories. And I also want to include this also to show the connection that this can sometimes have to multiple personality disorder, uh, which is now called dissociative identity disorder. So Patricia Burgess um, in the mid 1980s developed, developed postpartum depression now, one of the reasons why she developed so much depression is one of her babies uh, was born uh, paralyzed because of the trauma. The physical trauma of birth led to one arm of the baby boy being paralyzed, and she felt tremendous guilt over this and suffered from uh, depression. Um, she went to a therapist, Anne Marie Bowman, and instead of the therapist, you know, understanding what the probable cause of the depression was, which is fairly obvious, she instead started to ask questions of Pat, Patricia. Um, have you ever heard of multiple personalities? So she led her down the track of maybe that she has a personal, multiple personalities and that um, may be the cause of the depression. As a result of the therapist asking suggestive questions such as who am I talking to now and which personality are you now, etc., over weeks of therapy, Patricia developed 30 different personalities um, and, and answered the therapist as the therapist asked to hear from each personality. So it's a very suggestive type of therapy. And then Patricia was sent to Bennett Braun and Bennett Braun, uh, Dr. Bennett Braun took over. He was at a, a Rush uh, Hospital and he helped her then start to uncover repressed memories of a satanic cult. Now, Bennett Braun had pre-existing ideas that um, satanic cults existed and, they, and that they may be the cause of multiple personality disorder. So her therapy with Bennett Braun lasted two years or more. Um, from approximately 86 to um, 88, she was um, host hospitalized in the Rush um, Hospital where Bennett Braun worked. Now, Bennett Braun used a cocktail of sa uh, pharmaceuticals and lots of different ones, uh, some of which were involved in um, anxiety, other ones were to relax her and um, hypnosis. He used hypnosis to help her recall memories. So Bennett Braun did have this belief in repressed memories that went along with his beliefs of uh, satanic cults. Now, the history of, ben, uh, of Bennett Braun was that years earlier, when he was training to be a, a doctor and a psychiatrist, he was actually asked to leave his resident, residency as a doctor, but he did eventually receive his degree at uh, the Rush Hospital after repeatedly failing. And even after he got his MD, he w repeatedly failed to get board certifi certification from the state. He, eventually, he was able to find a job in this hospital. Now, the tragic thing about this is Patricia did indeed develop deep and disturbing memories of being in a satanic cult with murders, dismemberment of babies and, and so on. But the disturbing thing is, is that she developed a belief system with Bennett Braun that her whole family had been involved in this cult, including her children. So tragically her children which who were approximately five and three years old at the time were dragged into a therapy sessions themselves at the hospital they became resident at the hospital and they also started to go through the therapy techniques and develop false memories themselves of satanic rituals and eating babies and at one point 
with the help of Bennett Braun's suggestion, uh, one of the boys remembered a body being cut open and guts coming spilling out. And it turned out that what the boy was recalling is probably a scene from Star Wars. This is something that Patricia said later on, but it was believed to be a real thing by uh, Bennett Braun. Now, not only, <laughs> this is um, half comical and half tragic, not only did Bennett Braun believe in this, but he heard that Patricia told of her family getting involved in grinding up human flesh. Of course, this didn't happen, and because it didn't happen, I hope it's easier to uh, bear. And as a result, he took a um, hamburger from Patricia's family's barbecue and brought it into uh, the Rush Hospital, had it tested using the facilities at the Rush Hospital, and he came to the conclusion, incorrectly by the way, that the hamburger contained human flesh. So not only was he a bad scientist in the psychiatric sense, but also a bad biological scientist as well. I don't know how he came to this conclusion. It turned out to be false. Now, side by side all of this, eventually the insurance payments uh, run out and then these patients, such as Patricia, get separated from their doctor, thank goodness, because they get time to think about the craziness of what they've just been through in a psychotherapy like this. And indeed, Patricia learnt from various sources, such as the journal uh, JAMA, that hypnosis should not be used because it could lead to false memories. The American Medical Association also wrote in the mid-80s that hypnosis is dangerous because it can lead to false memories. And so she started to uncover information like this after her therapy and then started to develop doubts. So this helped Patricia realize that she had developed false memories and then she retracted all of the unusual memories that she had uh, recalled. She understood that it the repressed memory therapy had brought them out. The, the, the cocktail of drugs with hypnosis had led her down this track. And she also retracted the idea that she had re multiple personalities. She came to the conclusion that all these multiple personalities were false too. So she was coming to her senses now after being separated from uh, the therapist for a time. So sometimes it's good that with crazy therapists, therapies like this, it's sometimes good that insurance runs out eventually. Now, uh, Dr. Richard Off Offshe, who was a skeptic of repressed memories, a skeptic of multiple personalities, helped advise uh, Patricia on a legal case that she brought. And he did not believe the diagnosis of multiple personality disorder or the stories of satanic abuse or anything like that. So he helped bring some sense to what had been going on. He had come across other cases like this. Now, the insurance policies had paid out a lot to diff different patients, uh, to, to the doctors actually, for the treatment of different patients at Rush Hospital to uh, Bennett Braun and the hospital combined. And they received something like $3 million over a period of time from these multiple personality cases that ended up in hospitalization, which is very expensive in the United States and which also led to high costs from the pharmaceuticals used and all the attention that the patients uh, got. Now, what Patricia Burgess did is that she sued her therapist and the hospital for damages, for creating false memories and for uh, in, in satanic cult memories and for creating multiple personalities too. And then she also found out at that time that Bennett Braun faced 11 other similar allegations and lawsuits at the same time from individuals who had extremely similar stories with extremely similar memories to the ones that Patricia Burgess had recalled. Now, the similarities it was not because these satanic cults existed. There's no evidence that they did exist. The similarities in the types of memories must have been coming from the therapists because it's only this, these therapists who believe this that were producing this kind of 
fantastical memories um, that were so very similar between cases. Now, the hospital and uh, Bennett Braun settled for a $10 million suit um, to settle the case without admitting any wrongdoing in 1997. And to learn more about this, you can go to uh, YouTube. I've left the link here to watch a 40 minute long documentary that goes into all the details uh, you need to come to your own conclusions. And I really, really hope you go and see that uh, documentary because it's not until you contemplate all the details that it becomes apparent to you, I hope, of how your certainty of, of the fact that these were false memories will increase if you get the details from this documentary. Now, these cases also happen in the UK Campaigners are calling for better regulation of the psychotherapy industry and a warning that some therapists are implanting false memories into the minds of vulnerable people. The family of one London nurse is raising awareness of the issue after she falsely accused them of murder. Sarah Harris reports. She was a beautiful, happy child who grew up to achieve her dream of becoming a London nurse. But Carol's family say after she had therapy under hypnosis to help with headaches in her 20s, she falsely accused them of satanic abuse and murder before she sadly passed away. The allegations broke her father's heart. Carol's early life had been wiped out completely and she didn't remember it and it had been replaced by these horrific memories which are totally false every single one of them and uh, it grieves me to think that uh, Carl won't know how much we loved her you know at the end Carol's relatives are now leading a campaign to help dozens of other families who believe they've been falsely accused after their loved ones have undergone the same therapy there are far too many victims of sexual abuse um, and they need to be supported but when you're directing your resources at these fantasy cases you're not supporting them you're doing the opposite and the difference between real victims is that they have been traumatized but sadly for them they can remember that trauma they don't need a therapy therapist to unblock their memories they need to put them in a metaphorical drawer and deal with them on a day-to-day -day basis Dr Julia Shaw is a memory expert at University College London. She's looked into many cases of false memory and says although the UK Council of Psychotherapists has already discredited this technique, more needs to be done. There is need for more regulation. There is need for people to know and understand the risks associated with going into people's pasts and asking leading questions and trying to tease out memories uh, of assumed events. So I, I think there's a def definite need for more regulation in this field. Dozens of families have already contacted the Felsteads from in and around London saying their loved one has fallen victim to the same sessions where so-called memories are recovered by hypnosis. In Carol's name, they say they won't rest until there is proper regulation, a chance to stop another family being painfully torn apart over flashbacks that never really happened at all. Sarah Harris, BBC London News. And now into the details of the Carol Felstead case. Let's flesh out some of the uh, details. So she's, her initial problem was headaches um, when she was in her 20s. She went to a physician, as far as I recall, and the physician could not find a physical problem. So she, she was referred to um, a psychologist or hypnotherapist because they, if they couldn't find a physical problem, they thought, well, maybe it is psychological. And she got taken into hypnotherapy sessions to help deal with this problem. And the psychiatric notes at the time, and this is me paraphrasing approximately what was said in the notes, were that she was abused from birth, but the patient cannot remember. Details will be, will be produced in due course. Now think about this, there's only two people in the room. You have the psychiatrist and Carol. Who knows 
whether she was abused from birth or not. If Carol cannot remember, it must be coming from the psychologist that she was abused from birth, presumably because she had symptoms of headaches and they think that all symptoms must come from, or mo uh, many, many symptoms come from repressed memories. She uh, was referred to the Tavistock Clinic. I think she got therapy elsewhere as well, but this is one of the clinics she was referred to where she began to work on recalling repressed memories over time. She came to remember her parents being leaders of a satanic cult, you know, where babies were murdered. Carol herself remembered having many babies and then being murdered. Of course, there's no evidence of this. Now, unfortunately, Carol passed away in 2005, after a period of a couple of decades in which she was distant from her family and her family didn't know why she was distant. And they got a phone call and found out that her psychiatrist was listed as the next of kin. And it took them a long time to figure out what had been going on. And if you want to learn more about this case, um, you c there's a website set up by her family called Justice for Carol uh, to get even more details. There's a wonderful talk from Kevin Felstead, who um, is Carol's brother, which I highly recommend. It's, it's a fantastic talk. And there is a book that Kevin and his other brother, Richard, wrote called Justice for Carol. And the link is in the PowerPoint here. Uh, which I recommend. I haven't read it myself yet, but I ordered it today, so I'm going to read it soon.